Welcome to the Jamoti Podcast. We are all surrounded by amazing coaches and leaders. So let's get an inside look at not just what they do, but how they do what they do. After all, becoming the best versions of ourselves is Jamoti, just a matter of doing it. You're at a smaller school and, and you've been, one thing, one question I've got to ask is about um, being at the boys level for a long time, having a state championship, going to four state tournaments with on the boys side. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And then moving to the girls side, what was the reason for the change? You know, I think we all get to a point when we coach at a, at a school, our level, um, you, you start realizing that you're going to have to share kids um, throughout the year. We're, we're at a big football school, um, and, and it was a great dynamic. You know, I, I played everything in high school, um, played football, basketball, baseball. Um, and, and so I kind of understood what it was like um, as a player um, having to move from sport to sport. I coached football for seven years here. Um, and and wow. so I was a big part of, of uh, the football program as well. Um, but being able to balance home life and being able to balance um, me and my wife wanted to wanted to have kids. I, I went back to school to get my admin stuff. And I knew I wasn't going to have time to do that if I continued to burn the candle at both ends, basically working 350 days a year. Yeah. Um, as I was doing as the boys coach here. Um, and, and if you would have told me, um, you know, 12 years ago that, that I would have ever been coaching girls, especially here, you know, I would have said you were crazy. Um, one, one of my mentors, Coach Johnson, Coach Wayne Johnson was here. Um, he was towards the end of his career. He decided he was going to step out of it. And uh, he came to me and he said, I really think you should look at this girl's job. Um, you know, there was there was uh, some talent coming up and, and he, he knew that it was going to be a good job. Um, and really, uh, you know, I went home and talked to my wife about it, leap of faith. Um, Coach Johnson taught me into it. And, and it was the best decision I ever made um, for a lot of different reasons not just because we've been able to have success, but, you know, I have been able to be, be at home more. I was able to go back and get my admin stuff and, and get, get into upper level admin. Um, but to be honest with you, I've enjoyed learning. Um, you know, the, the uh, girls don't get out in the yard and play as much as boys do specifically. They don't go to the city park and play as much, you know, and I yeah. think that's changing some, uh, but you, you know, you're, there's more detailed things, in my opinion, that I have to cover as a head girls basketball coach here in order to develop players than I did on the boys' side here. And so learning those things um, has been something that, that I didn't know that I was going to have to learn, uh, but but that has been a, uh, a very enlightening part of the job. Um, and, and then being around, um, being around girls, and, and the, they're different. They're policers. You know, a lot of times, you know, you have to build confidence in girls, whereas my experience with boys was is every single boy thinks yeah. that they think they're a D1 player. They think you should throw the ball to them and everybody should get out of the way. And when you have eight guys like that, you know, how, how are you supposed to pick which one to throw yeah. the ball? Yeah. <laughs> so anyways, those are some, you know, differences over the years that I've experienced. Um but but Adlu has been good to me, and and they've I've had a lot of opportunities to be around a lot of good players, um, and and been around a strong admin team here that that's always had our back, and, and so uh, my my days here have have definitely um, been good to me. Managing two sport athletes as a coach is it is challenging. I think some guys do it better than others. I, I think I'm finally at a place now where my football players feel good about doing that they don't feel like they're letting me down because they're not but maybe i think it's really easy without even realizing it we can say things or do things or our facial expressions body language our choices we make almost make them feel like they're doing something wrong by playing multiple sports so with your experience especially as a football coach on the boy side but then golly with girls and, and volleyball it, it's still there how do you handle multiple sport athletes for me personally, the best thing was the fact that I referenced while ago, I, I played everything, you know, I'm, I'm from a small school myself. And so I understand it from an athlete, athlete point of view, first and foremost. Um, and, and then coming to Idaho, I got, I got here 16 years ago. I, I came as the boys assistant. It was obvious to us, you know, football is king in Texas, but it was also going to be king here. And so there was never going to be um, when I took over as a head boys basketball coach here, 
the the football coach was never going to feel like we were trying to make basketball number one. My biggest goal as the boys basketball coach when, when I took over 15 years ago as a head coach was to take what they had been doing in football and take that culture and take that winning and, and take all the things that they had been doing good in football and, and implement that in basketball. And, and so we, we felt like it was a sleeping giant in basketball here because of the foundation had already been laid in another sport. And so we yeah. were able to piggyback off that success. Um, and then I think just being genuine, being genuine with the kids, when you tell them we want you to play those other sports when, when it's time, for, for you to come to our sport, you know, we're, we're going to do the best we can and we're going to bust it and we're, we're going to figure out how to maximize who we are. Um, the dynamic in coaching boys and coaching girls at our level is different um, when you talk about when you have to get your work done. So it was the boys basketball coach at a 3A school, in my opinion, at a football school. You have to get all your work done in the summer. You, you know, you got to play 40, 50 games in the summer. Well, yeah, the school development that the UIL has allowed us to do over the last three or four years it has changed that a little bit where you do have access to them, um, you know, as far as individually in the summer. Uh, but but when I was the boys basketball coach here, we were playing 40 or 50 games every summer. We were going to three or four team camps. We were having open gym two or three nights a week. You know, that month, month and a half in the summer is when we were getting all of our work done because I knew come August 1st, we weren't going to see them until most of the time, the mid-December, um, you know, we had a very special group in 2010, 2011. We actually did not start basketball until December 20th. Wow. You know, we played the state championship football game on Saturday night in Mansfield, and then we had our first district game on Tuesday. And, and so that, you know, you have to get all your work done in the summer because yeah. you're definitely not going to have any prep time during the year. As the girls coach here, um, we we still get our kids in the fall. And, and so they're they're practicing volleyball outside the athletic period. Um, and, and then our basketball kids are, are, are practicing basketball during during the fall, during the athletic period is our setup right now. And, and so we don't have to get as met, as much done in the summer as we were having to get done in the summer on the boys side. That makes sense. And I, I love the idea of you said, you know, being genuine with them. I think if we truly like, what's our why? If our why is really to for them to have a great high school experience, and we care about those kids, and they love getting to play, like let's say football. Kid loves football. If I truly care about him, why would I want to take that away from him? Why would I want him to do less than that? And the only reason I can think of that I would want that is my pride and my ego, because I know that he will be the best basketball player he could be if he's spending all this time doing that. But that really is only serving me and, and maybe the program, but not that individual. And I think that's kind of taken me maybe some time over the years to, to really figure out what my why is with this, you know, and, and it, it has to be more about, I want every player to feel like, uh, like Stan Bonowitz said, he said, you, you got to gas out. Every high school player gases out at the end of their career, at their high school career, meaning they have no regrets. They did everything all out that they felt they wanted to or could do. Um, that, But, Coach, that's hard. Absolutely, it's hard, especially when your name's on the top line and, and you feel like it, you know, if a kid plays football, they got a chance that they're going to get hurt. Or at the very least, they're not going to be spending as much time in the gym and it's going to directly impact, you know, you as a head coach. Um but I feel like it's important for, for us to realize it, it it shouldn't be us standing in the way of, of doing something that, that the kid wants to do. Um, you know, um, and, and the other part of that is specifically at small in small school, Texas. Head basketball coaches and athletic directors slash head football coaches have had notorious bad relationships through you know um and not everywhere but but you hear a lot of horror stories about that yeah and so you know when, when I was the head basketball coach here on the boys side I tried to go out of my way to develop that relationship with the athletic director um and, and just understand that likely basketball was never going to be the most important thing in a place like this but that if we could coexist if there was a way we could coexist and also we could be successful 
um, you know, that was really my main goal. But but you want to have a good relationship with your head football coach and athletic director, if possible. I, I know there's places that, that it's just not possible. You know, um, I, I don't want to paint a rosy picture and know that everybody – um, you know, in a fair and equal position. Just make it work out with the guy that really could care less about your sport and how, because that that is, there are some places like that, but I think you nailed it though too, is just, I think we got to make an effort. Like as the, as a basketball coach in the state of Texas, maybe Indiana is different where the effort has to be from other places to the <laughs> basketball coach. But right. This is where we are. And we've chosen. That's the thing. That's another thing we got to remember. Like I choose to be here. My, many people, they choose to be at the situation where they're at. And with that, we need to make an effort to meet with that football coach, acknowledge the important role or volleyball, whatever sport that you're dealing with, but acknowledge the important role that they play in the school dynamic within your your the students' lives, your players' lives, and then, yeah, like under, making sure that you're bringing that um, your why to the table, which is you really want it to be the best experience for your players. Uh, I think that's a good that's a good nugget from you. Yeah, and then once you do, if you go and, and they're being very unreasonable, you know, it, it's one of those things where where you try to fight for your program, and and then if. If you get to the point where you feel like, okay, this is completely unfair and this is ridiculous, then then maybe it's time for you to move on. And and those are the decisions that we all get to weigh in in every different spot that we're in. Yeah, but I think the big you the big thing you said there is you gave it a shot to fight for Absolutely. your program. I, if you don't like conflict, right? If if you don't want those interactions, I think there's sometimes we we get in this position where we're frustrated with so many things but we're not attempting to fix or change or not even giving it a shot. I mean, at least do that, like fight for your program. And then ultimately, yeah, make your decision of, is this a place where you continue to stay? And, you know, for a long time in the, in where, with where you're at and the circumstances or time to move on. But thankfully it sounds like you've been in that place where you're happy where you are and you love the environment. I love it here too, even though we're on our third football coach since I've been here. And that's always an interesting thing for the coaches that have gone through that is you don't know how this guy's going to be coming in. And, and, but, but again, it's about that first impression, letting them know that you're there to support them and you're not there to, Hey, you stay over there. I stay over here. You see the difference. Like, don't <laughs> like, I think, I think it's all about how we uh, present ourselves like early on in that relationship. Yeah, for sure. And then my biggest kind of finishing that out, my biggest thing here was I was a football coach for seven years. So I'm going to I'm going to try to be every bit as good over there. Yeah, as I am. it's my time and I'm the head basketball coach. And and so that was one of the reasons that I felt like I built some trust with the head football coach is, is I, I did everything I could to be the best football coach I could be during that season. Thank you for checking out today's episode. Please take a moment to subscribe to this podcast share it with your fellow coaches, and find us on social media for what's coming up next on the Jamoti Podcast. It's just a matter of doing it.